welcome students we have talked about new criticism and practical criticism in our last class today we will take up the advent of eliot and we'll talk briefly about his battle against arnold and wordsworth when we talk about the advent of eliot we have to know that the poetical theories of t s eliot uh, are mainly the product of a poet who wanted to clear the ground for the type of poetry that he himself sought to write now his utterances on nature and function of poetry and criticism are a statement of his own practice as a poet and critic we know that his vision was intensely colored by french symbolists especially malam bremard baudelaire and lafarge and this movement had its origin in edgar allan poe and eliot was not free from american poets impact so never at home in england however his most powerful influence was that of the images movement whose chief exponents exponents were t e hume and ezra pound though eliot had never had any occasion for having any direct contact with t e hume but uh, his philosophical work speculations which appeared in 1924 and the american fellow immigrant ezra pound uh, greatly influenced eliot's mind and introduced him to the theories of t e hume Now, when Eliot appeared on the English literary scene, he found himself face to face with great theorists of the Romantic Revival, William Wordsworth, uh, whose theories uh, compiled in the preface to Lyrical Ballads was still considered to be the most uh, powerful laying down of his laws regarding nature and function of poetry and questions related to language. Eliot found Wordsworth speaking from an end which was very opposite to his own. because wordsworth's view was that uh, that of a poet of the people whereas eliot by temperament was on the side of the select few and first of all he had to make a hard bit to dislodge wordsworth we can say and although less powerful was matthew arnold because matthew arnold carried a didactic approach to poetry and him also he eliot had to push to the background to pronounce his own views on the subject now eliot and wordsworth had to face uh, more or less similar type of circumstances in order to make room for themselves because in 1800 when wordsworth came out with uh, the poetical manifesto in the shape of preface to lyrical ballads he was doing precisely what eliot was also seeking to do uh, maybe another 120 years later because wordsworth had found the poetry of 18th century too artificial and he thought that it had severed the connections with man and life it as it existed and was rather hankering life uh, available in the books of the past this huge gap which was discernible between life and nature was described by alexander pope and few of the other poet, uh, poets of the age of reason the whole emphasis now shifted to neatness finish and polish so poetry uh, wordsworth asks this kind of a poetry can uh, never appeal to the living so when we see at robert burns william blake goldsmith cooper etc who were raising their voice against this kind of a suffocating atmosphere wordsworth was uh, initiated to blast the enemy camps we can call with success and set the uh, set a pace for the new movement now his passionate efforts to demolish such papers or palaces like we can say um eliot when he denounced wordsworth theory of personal poetry it went to the extreme of pronouncing uh, the theory of impersonal poetry because wordsworth uh, declared in the lyrical ballads that he wanted to choose incidents and situations from common life and express them as far as possible in the language used by men now poetry uh, wordsworth said is uh, is the spontaneous overflow of uh, powerful uh, feelings 
but uh, he wrote poetry to provide immediate pleasure, uh, the beauty of the universe. Uh, poetry, when he said it is a spontaneous overflow, Eliot found that this was very unpalatable because in spirit, he was actually closer to the age of Pope and Johnson. So he could not accept Wordsworth dictum that poetry is the spontaneous overflow of emotions. And it appeared to him that uh, freedom must be granted to the poet um, which was no less than we can call it a license so that he can do as he pleased. So in an effort to um, in an effort to rebuke this uh, came out his celebrated essay Tradition and Individual Talent which was uh, a rebuttal of romanticist viewpoint. The essential difference between both Wordsworth and Eliot was that um, former that is Wordsworth he was more subjective and Eliot is objective. So what constitutes the major difference between the romantic and the classical points of view were the uh, differences between uh, Wordsworth and Eliot. Now, uh, when, talk, when we talk about emotion, the emotion as experienced by the poet is not the same as one communicated in the poem. Now, it is very uh, different. This is, that, that is why Eliot called that a new compound. And he believed that this process of formation of this new compound does not take place consciously or deliberation. And the formula of Wordsworth is simply a personal account of some poetic practices of him, uh, personal uh, poet. But before passing on, Eliot believed that we must have to be aware that it cannot be spontaneous and we have to correct the emotions and try to be objective. Now, some kind of a poetic diction, he said, is required. And he also goes on to say that uh, the position uh, that Wordsworth was fouting that the language of age can never be the language of poetry. So he said some kind of a diction is required. And when we talk of T.S. Eliot's relationship or uh, uh, like opposition to Arnold, his own theories, although they were on the subject, he... Matthew Arnold also was denounced by Eliot on the grounds on the on the grounds of definition of poetry, and uh, he rebuked him uh, very like harshly, calling him a propagandist for criticism than a critic, and he refused to accept major dict Arnold's major dictum, which was poetry is at bottom a criticism of life, and this didacticism you can say. Uh, was uh, harshly rebuked by T.S. Eliot and in his essay he rejects this viewpoint and said that the bottom is the bottom so far as life goes. Uh, therefore, he, he said that the techniques of allusions which were accepted by Arnold can never be accepted as far as poetic diction is concerned.